This video is going to focus on knitting objects two at a time using the magic loop method. You can see I've currently got two socks on the needles and a nice long cable. The long cable allows us to work the magic loop method. I do have a link in the video below if you're interested in learning how to knit items one at a time rather than two at a time. This video is going to focus on how to cast on and how to divide our stitches over both needles so that we can work effectively two at a time. So for the purposes of this video, I've chosen two different colors of yarn to cast on so you can tell the difference between sock one and sock two. I'm going to cast on all of sock one using this goldish saffron color and sock two using this gray. So to begin casting on two at a time magic loop method, we're going to begin by putting half the stitches of our first object on our needle. You can use whatever cast on method you like. I'm going to simply use the German twisted cast on. Um, I'm not going to focus on that in this video, but in the link or in the comments below, there's going to be a link to the German twisted cast on tutorial. I'm going to assume that my pattern has told me that I need to cast on a total of 20 stitches for each item. I should call them socks. We'll just call them socks. Um, and those 20 stitches would be divided evenly over the two needles. So my target half of the sock is 10 stitches. So I'm at eight, nine, and 10. So once we've worked half of our first sock, we need to cast on the entire number of stitches for our second sock. So to cast on the second sock, I have dropped my gold yarn and I'm going to start with a slip knot. You can start however you feel comfortable. And I'm now going to cast on the total number of stitches for my second sock. In this case, it's 20. Okay, 19 and 20. So now what you have on your needle is half the total number of stitches you require for your first sock and the total number of stitches you require for your second sock. We now need to pull, of, pull all of these onto the cable so we can split our second sock stitches in half and fold the needle. So I'm gonna count out half of my stitches. So two, four, six, eight, ten. And with the shorter tail sticking out closer to you, we're going to fold the needle in half and pull the working yarn through. And at the same time, we're kind of turning our needles so that they point to the right. Okay, so now we've got our working yarns, or pardon me, our, our cast on stitches so that the second sock is onto two, two needles. We still have to cast on the remaining stitches for sock number one. So to do that, we're going to turn our needles so that they're pointing to the left. Get that gray yarn out of the way. And it is a little fussy on this first stitch, I'm not going to lie. Um, we want to set up our, our hands so that we're holding the working yarn as if we were casting on a regular first stitch. Because our yarn is anchored to that back needle, we don't have to worry about a slip knot. And we're going to cast on that first stitch in whatever method you would. In this case, I'm using a German twisted. So we're going to keep those needles parallel to each other or as close to as we can without getting too annoying. And we're going to snug down that first stitch nice and tight. Now you're going to continue knitting or pardon me, casting on your stitches to the total number. In this case, it's 10 for me because that's half of the total number required to cast on. Um, if you're knitting a sock, it'll probably be, say, 32 stitches. So I'm going to finish casting on these stitches, and then I'm going to show you the order in which we work in the round once we have both set of stitches cast on. Okay, so now I have a total of 20 stitches cast on for each sock. I've got 10 from the original cast on, 20 from the second sock, and then the final 10, but my needles are pointing the wrong direction for knitting, so I'm simply going to rotate my needles so that we can start working in the round. 
you'll notice that my cast on tail, the short tail from the cast on, is on the outside of the needle and the working yarn is sitting between the needles. What we want to make sure before we begin casting or before we uh, begin working that first stitch of a round is we want to make sure that our working yarn is draped over the back needle. If it's not, we end up catching it between our needles and usually end up creating an extra stitch, which we don't want to do. So to get started, we're going to pull out that back needle and you'll notice that those stitches then move onto the cable. I'm going to pull it out nice and long so that we can easily reach around to the first stitch on our front needle. And again, making sure that that working yarn is sort of draped over the back. It's not caught inside the loop, it's outside the loop. We're going to knit that first stitch. I recommend giving a nice little tug so you don't end up with a long running thread on that first round. And then we're simply going to knit across the first stitches. In this case, it's 10, but the first half of our stitches. So we're just going to knit, or if, you're, if you've got a pattern that says, you know, knit one, purl one, work in pattern across that front needle. All right, so I have completed all of the stitches in gold that I can. So now I need to move the silver or the gray stitches onto my needle into position to work. Much like when we did with the gold, we want to make sure that it's sort of draped over that back of the cable. We don't want to get it caught between our stitches. Now, if you were working with two um, balls of the same color, obviously you'd have to be a little bit more careful with yarn management, but really you're just looking to make sure that you don't have your two sets of socks attached. So I'm going to knit to the end in gray. Actually, I'm going to pause and just show you here. This is our magic loop, this kind of floopy eight. That's what gives us the magic loop terminology. That's why we need a nice long cable. If you were working on a shorter cable, I think you'd find that you'd get kind of a pinch point at the end of your needles where you fold your cable. So I'm just going to work to the end of this uh, front of my sock. And then we're going to turn our work so we can work the back. And that's sort of where the mental pattern comes into play of remembering the order in how you work your sock. So we worked one, two, if, if we're considering this sock one and sock two, I want to say we work the front of one, the front of two, and then when we turn our work so that we can knit across the back, it's now the opposite. We're going to work across the back of two and then the back of one. So we're going to push our needle that's now closest to us into the stitches off of the cable. And because we tug down a little bit tight on that first stitch, it's going to be a little bit tough to push those stitches. So I always recommend pulling out that back cable nice and long. And what that does is puts that first stitch onto the cable. So you've got a little bit more play so you can push your stitches. Okay. So much like before, we're going to make sure that that gray yarn is not caught in our loop. It's looped over the back and we're going to knit across the second stitch. Uh, pardon me, the back of sock two. <clears throat> and these long or the cast on tails are actually kind of an important part of the process of completing a round. We know that when we have our working yarn tail and our cast on tail at the same place that we've completed a round. If they're at opposite ends, it means you've only half completed a round. So there's the tenth stitch on the second sock. Now we're going to move this gold yarn into position to work. I've completely dropped the gray, making sure the gold is over the top. And I'm going to the knit to the end of round. And that's the intricacies of working two at a time uh, magic loop. The biggest part to remember is yarn ball management. You'll probably be working two balls the same color, so you want to make sure that you keep them separate from each other so you don't accidentally join your socks. Remember that that cast on tail is your indicator of beginning of round. 
Thanks for joining me and happy knitting.